The Cranky Geek WebRTC Spring 2021 show is possible thanks to our sponsors. Google, Agora, Element, Dolby I.O., Twilio, and Ring Central. See the links in the description for more information. Okay, we're back. Um, for those of you watching the live stream, I guess there was a little mishap there. We'll, we'll restart again. Uh, one of the bigger challenges of WebRTC is signaling. Uh, you know, WebRTC doesn't include signaling, so you kind of need to figure that on your own or work with a partner. And you know, one uh, great project you use actually is, is matrix.org. So to talk about um, that project and uh, how to use it and, and how signaling can work in WebRTC, we've uh, like to introduce Dave Baker. Um, Dave, take it away. Thanks very much. Um, so yeah. Uh, by way of a quick introduction, um, as you said, my name is Dave. Uh, I work for Element, uh, which is the company that mostly develops and contributes to the protocol development of Matrix. Um, I've been working for Matrix uh, since the start, um, across most of the stack. Um, started off my career writing uh, C++ um, for media and RTP stacks. Um, just sort of a general introduction. Um, well, I thought what we're going to talk about today. Um, basically, I'm going to talk about um, WebRTC, and as uh, Chad was referring to, the um, fact that there is no signaling layer, and tell you a little bit about Matrix, about how the events work, how calling in Matrix works, uh, a couple of problems and how we solve them, um, how we do E2E in calls, and then just the openness of the standard. Um, so yeah, let's kick off. How do you set up a WebRTC call? I suspect most of you probably know this. You probably all use the API. You do things like adding your local tracks. You generate an offer. Uh, you send the offer to the other side. And then you send the candidates to the other side. But how do you do that? Um, well, most people, you probably use an HTTP call or a WebSocket. Open a WebSocket, send it to the other side, the server in the middle. It works pretty well. Um, but what if there are an open standard, something like SIP, um, for uh, but a modern version for the web? Um, that's what it looks like at the moment. Uh, WebRTC includes those bits. Uh, SIP was not part of it, which is probably a good thing because SIP is quite old and most of it is based around it, it, uh, UDP and retransmits and the retransmits that you need to do to make it reliable. Um, I, I assume the uh, avian car uh, carrier example you had there too had similar limitations. So. Yeah, yeah, pretty unreliable by, by and large. <laughs> um, so Matrix, what is it? Um, it's open. Uh, it's a, what was it called? We got modern, modern standard for real-time communications. Um, which means it's open, so all the client servers are open, it's open source, and it's an open standard. Uh, it's federated, which means I can host my server and you can host your server, and we can both talk to each other. Uh, we don't need to be locked inside a walled garden or a silo. Uh, it's completely extensible, all the events are JSON-based, and you can basically put whatever data you'd like over there. And there's end-to-end -end encryption available, which I'll touch on a bit later. Um, there are lots of different clients available. Um, I actually work for Element, which works, which who writes the client called Element. Um, but you don't need to use that client. You can use your own client if you don't like Element, um, and you'll get just as much access to the Matrix network. A um, few use cases, obviously, we'll be talking about that first one, interoperable VoIP. Here's a general overview of how the ecosystem works. There's lots of clients up there. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole of this diagram, uh, but that gives, should give you an idea of everything that's out there in the ecosystem. Um, and the stack and how everything fits together. Uh, but that's, yes, there's three different types of element. There's an ex experimental client called Hydrogen, and then there's lots of other clients that are all open source. Um, in terms of adoption, um, VoIP has been back in, in Matrix since way off the end of that graph uh, in 2014. Um, and now in 2019, 2020, um, we decided to give VoIP a bit of an overhaul and make it a bit more re robust and a bit more reliable. So matrix event, what does it look like? It basically looks like this. Um, you can see there we've got uh, a type uh, and some content, and then in that content is a body. Uh, and then we've got a sender there. That's me, I'm Dave, I sent this message. Uh, and the room ID is the ID of the room that this thing's in. Um, so there's another me talking. Let's see what this actually looks like in the wild. Uh, cool. you, got a, you got a demo here? I have, yes. Uh, so this is Element. Uh, this is the web version. Uh, this is uh, develop, the developed version, in fact, development.element.io. Um, and this is me. This is me saying hello world. And it is all open source stuff too, right? Yes, it is. Yes. Hi, Cranky Geek. Uh, 
So I can go have a look at this in our developer tools, view the source of this message. There you go, it's got a body. Um, uh, things like uh, uh, the timestamp, which is right now, and the uh, timestamp that was on metrics.org, um, and the event ID. So that's uh, the very, very basics. Um, what about calls? Um, basically, they look a bit like this. Uh, you send first what is an m.call.invite. You probably guess what kind of things these do. Uh, and then if you're familiar with WebRTC, you'll know that there's a thing called trickle ice, uh, where you can send your candidates out as they're ready, uh, which means you don't have to wait till all the candidates are gathered. You're on your call code to connect faster. Uh, Matrix supports those right out of the box with the M call candidates event. I'll tell you a bit little more, little bit more about that later. Uh, but for now, here's the invite event. Um, not much to it, really. Uh, it's got the SDP there, which is the SDP that comes straight out of your WebRTC stack. Uh, it's a type offer, um, and there's a call ID. Uh, there's a couple of other things that I'll go into a little bit more detail later, but we'll leave them for now. Um, there's the candidates event. Um, you can see the candidate there. Um, that's just one candidate. Um, that's, a, that's a relay candidate. That's probably a, uh, well, I made that one up, so it's probably not that. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> we just talked about uh, you know a turn relay in the last session, so yes, <laughs> so we're all experts on that now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's what it looks like in Matrix, and that's just sending a single candidate over. Um, so let's have a look at this in action as well, shall we? Uh, there's that client back, and there's another one. So I've got somebody to call, uh, and let's try a voice call, shall we? Um, there we go. And you, I'm in developer mode here, so you can see these. Uh, Events come in here. I'm going to mute myself so I don't get hell around. Um, but there you go. I'm in a call now. Um, should we hang that one up now? Let's prove the point. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at this. There's the STP, it was all of it. Um, it's uh, it's only half the length that it would normally be if it was a video call. Um, but there's still quite a lot because this is uh, yeah. <laughs> fun, well, the, the, the fun parts of wherever you see the STP, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then you can see there's candidates again. There's going to be a lot of these. Uh, yeah, lots and lots of less candidates. Um, so, yeah, and then you can see that you know, we, I've, so I've not got developed. This is what it looks like. If you don't turn developer mode on, you don't see any of this. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically what a call looks like. So, what's uh, a little bit more about the subtleties? What kind of problems? Um, do we run into and how have we worked around them? Well, it's important to remember that in a protocol like SIP, you would always be sending these signaling messages to a single device. Uh, whereas in Matrix, everything goes to a room. So everything's seen by all users in the room, which if you're just calling somebody directly is just the other user, but you'll still see your own messages in fact. Um, and in fact, you'll have multiple devices. Uh, so you can, you might, uh, pick up a call with somebody, and then they'll pick up the call on one device, uh, and then they might decide, oh, well, I want to pick it up on this device instead. Um, and the way we work around this is we have these, this concept called party IDs. Uh, that's it there. Uh, you might have seen it in the, in the previous event, but it's highlighted there in red. Um, and it's pretty simple. You, at the start of the call, um, you just pick an ID uh, for your device, or you just use the device ID from end-to-end -end decryption, as long as it's consistent. Um, an ID for your party in that call. Okay. So e each device gets its own party ID? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and then that basically just allows us to match up the uh, candidate's message from each device to the answer that they sent, uh, because we couldn't do that before. And that's the thing that's new in the new protocol, actually. Um, there's another problem, which is that if you do get that pro uh, problem of multiple devices trying to answer, uh, the callee will pick one of them, but the device that didn't get picked won't necessarily know, and so it will sit there with media not connecting and not knowing that it hasn't been picked. Uh, so we invented a new uh, event for that, which is called the select answer event, uh, which is just an event sent by the caller uh, to say, hey, I picked this answer. So if you're the device that uh, it didn't pick, you'll see this in the room and you'll see uh, that it didn't, uh, let's say you're Bob 2. Um, okay. And then you could stop ringing or you know, stop whatever notification, right? Okay. 
Yeah, exactly. You can just close down the call interface and, and get, get back on with being a client. It's a bit like that. Um, probably broadly what you would expect. It's a call ID and it's got a party ID. Uh, and it says a, a little selected party ID, which is the ID of the party, obviously, which the answer you picked. A um, couple more features. Um, now we've got negotiation. Uh, so WebRTC, and if you probably, probably know, it has uh, this negotiation semantics. Uh, so if you want to change the SDP during a call, uh, it's often used for hold and resume functionality, things like that. Uh, we can do that now right natively in Matrix. Uh, you just send this m.call.negotiate with a type offer and a type, and then you respond with a type answer. Uh, looks a little bit like this. Uh, I've highlighted there in the SDP, you can say that, see that's uh, A equals send only, so that might be putting somebody putting somebody on hold, uh, for example. Um, other than that, looks very similar. Uh, it's got a call ID, it's got a party ID, as we saw before. Um, and that's basically it. Um, should we see that in action? Let's try this on. Here we go. Right, here are uh, two devices again. Um, and I, again, I'm going to place a call to Dave Test 4. There we go. We're ringing. Um, so here I've got, I've got me on hold. Um, there we go. It's uh, updated to show that I'm on hold. Uh, and you can see these two end up called up negotiate events. Um, again, the SDP is a normal somewhere in there. There's probably an A equals send only. Um, probably have to trust me on that unless you can find it. Um, but there is. It's a type offer. That's the point. Uh, okay. It's uh, <laughs> doing this negotiation. Uh, and then you can see the other party is sending this type answer. Uh, could also do if we're. Uh, why not? We've got another one. Uh, this is this is Dave test three, um, and I can actually get this one back. Uh, so I'm going to show you now. Uh, it's, I've got my Android device here. Uh, let's try calling that. Um, this is this is Dave test three. My Android device is signing as Dave test three. Um, so let's try calling, and with any luck. I'll be able to. Yep, my Android device is ringing. I can answer that. And yep, uh, correctly, that has indeed stopped ringing here. Um, so it knows that it's uh, it's the call's been answered on my Android device, and it can go away. Um, and now I've got a call established between uh, this Android device. Same works on iOS. Uh, I showed you there, um, and this browser, and that's Elements on the web and Android. Um, so you can just uh, switch between devices seamlessly. Oh. There we go. Uh, so I promised I was going to tell you a little bit about E2E. Here we go. Um, so in Matrix, uh, all conversations are E2E by default. Uh, so if you don't do anything, if you just start a conversation with someone, uh, you'll be using encryption and your conversation will be secure. Um, if you then, we also have verification. If you actually verify someone, then you will can absolutely guarantee that they haven't been man in the middle um, by anyone and you are genuinely talking to that person, um, but you don't have to verify people and then you get a reasonable level of security, a um, bit like any other uh, encryption protocol, really, any other messaging protocol. It uses OLM, which is our double ratchet algorithm. Uh, that's for single device to single device. Uh, and then Megolm, which is the group ratchet, which ties that all together to do calls, uh, sorry, uh, conversations between uh, large numbers of users and large numbers of devices. Won't go into too much detail about that. Um, Megolm makes it a little bit faster, um, but decentralized MLS, uh, which is a not a matrix standard, uh, but a general standard. Uh, we're in the process of implementing that, and that gives you logarithmic performance with respect to the number of devices in the room, but much faster. Um, WebRTC uh, uses, as you probably already know, DTLS encryption. And basically, the theory of that is that if you get this fingerprint uh, the other side, then you know that your call is secure uh, and you know that it's not being intercepted. Um, the benefit of Matrix is that you put that in a message in an E2E encrypted Matrix room and it gets the same level of protection as all of your Matrix messages get. Um, and you can guarantee that it gets to the other side and it hasn't been intercepted. And you can check all the all the signatures will be checked 
transparently in the background and you know that your call is secure. Uh, so basically, if you make a call over, over Matrix in an E2E room and you get E2E encryption for free. Uh, so just quickly at the end, a little bit about the standard. Um, it's an open standard. Um, those are the matrix spec changes uh, there. Um, you can go comment on them, read them, and be whatever you like. Uh, it's an open standard. If you don't like it, you can change it. Um, or you can, uh, or better still, you can tell us how we can change it. Uh, oh, so yeah, just, uh, a yeah. uh, couple of words in conclusion. Yeah. Um, we built WebRTC right into the core of Matrix, and uh, calling on Matrix will continue to evolve as, web, as WebRTC evolves, um, and it's hugely powerful. Um, everything's open, file bugs, uh, make comments, uh, make MSCs. Um, yeah, we we'll love, always love people to get involved. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Great. Thanks, thanks Dave. Cranky Geek is possible thanks to Google, as well as industry sponsors. Embed vivid voice and video in any application, on any device, anywhere. Dolby, the API platform for transforming media and communications. Element, talk to everyone through the open global matrix network, protected by proper end-to-end -end encryption. Ring Central, revolutionize your business communications with Ring Central APIs. Twilio, create real-time video apps that scale as you grow, from free one-to-one -one chats to larger group rooms.